Hi, I'm Kathleen Choi, a Korean chef now living in the U.S. My passion is creating healthy and delicious foods using some of my favorite Korean ingredients. Join me in learning about Korean foods, ingredients, and culture. Next on Kathleen's Korean Kitchen. Today's recipes are based on some of my favorite comfort foods. Jajangmyeon, a Chinese Korean dish made with delicious black bean sauce. I'm also making kun mandu, fried Korean dumplings served with chili and soy sauce vinaigrette. And later, a popular Japanese-inspired dish called tonkatsu, pan-fried pork cutlets served with homemade sweet and tangy katsu sauce, mashed sweet potatoes, and mixed green salad. Comfort foods mean different things to many people. And every culture has its own unique comfort foods. Foods that hold nostalgic memories, family recipes handed down, or just an appealing flavor usually qualify. In general, I believe comfort foods are tasty with big flavors and soft texture. Americans love their mac and cheese, chicken pot pie, and chicken soup. In Korea, we have a very popular dish called jajangmyeon that has been around for 100 years. And for most Koreans, it is considered one of the national foods or comfort foods. Jajangmyeon is the most popular takeout delivery food in Korea. And almost every Chinese Korean restaurant has this item on the menu. It is said that over 6 million servings of jajangmyeon are sold in South Korea every day. I was fortunate to find a local Chinese Korean restaurant that specializes in jajangmyeon. I'm here with the owner and executive chef of Sandong Palace, Chef Chu, who is the master of hand pool noodles. Thank you for your time and meeting with me. <laughs> I was honored when he invited me into his kitchen to watch him demonstrate how he makes the noodles. These days, there are hardly any chefs that can perform this kind of culinary aerial artistry with noodles. As with the Chinese culture, noodle making has been around for thousands of years in Korea. Chef Ju explains that it takes anywhere between a few months to a year of practice to develop the proper techniques required from getting the dough just the right consistency and length as well as master the skill of pulling noodles by hand. I was amazed to see how fast he worked. Within minutes, Chef Chu had created dozens of long, thin strings of noodles that he had pulled from one piece of dough. The noodles were then placed in boiling water to cook for a minute and onto a bowl with the rich black bean sauce on top. Of course, I have tasted fresh noodles made from noodle-making machines before, but the flavor and texture of these hand-pulled noodles just seem to taste so much better. Luckily for me, I brought my appetite and didn't waste any time digging into the freshly made jajangmyeon. Jajangmyeon is a dish that is messy to eat, but simply delicious. The key to enjoying delicious jajangmyeon is in the jajang sauce and fresh noodles. It is actually not too difficult to make, but you do need to have the key ingredient, which is the black bean sauce made from roasted soybeans and caramel. The ingredients that I'll be frying with the sauce are some ground pork, cabbage, zucchini, and onion. There's some slicing and chopping up to do, so let's get started. I'll use half of this cabbage and use some of it for my other recipe, which is kunmandu. I'm going to use about three quarters of the zucchini. Cut it up in long strips like this. Since they're going to be all mixed up with the sauce, just try to cut them up as small as you can. Brown onion, also just half, and leave the other half for the mandu filling as well. And finally, I have a couple of small red potatoes that I've peeled. 
You always want to cut up the vegetables in the same size and length so that all cook at the same time. Instead of using regular pork loins, I have about a pound of fresh ground pork and it will be much more convenient for this recipe. I'm going to fry some sauce with a tablespoon of olive oil. Jajang sauce is the key ingredient and you can get this from the Korean store or the Asian store. It comes in a jar like this. So now that the oil is heated up, add big heaping tablespoon. It is very important to fry the sauce for jajangmyeon. That's the first step. To this, about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And I have some stevia extract here for the sweetness. Again, a small capful goes a long ways, and this is about a tablespoon. You can use regular sugar if you want. Fry the sauce for about a minute or two, and then add the ground pork. Add about an ounce of cooking wine. It will eliminate the gaminess of the pork. Lastly, just a dash of fine ground black pepper. The pork is almost cooked, so to this I'll add the rest of the vegetables. Starting with the potatoes, because they take the longest time to cook. We'll fry the potatoes for about a minute until they soften. One of the key vegetables for chajang sauce is the cabbage. And also the zucchini. And finally, the onion. It will caramelize and give an added sweetness to the sauce. We'll let it simmer in medium-low heat for additional 10 minutes and then add the two heaping tablespoons of corn flour. Since we need some sauce, I'll be adding about a cup of water and we'll let it simmer for additional five to 10 minutes. Let's start with making the filling for the kunmandu dumplings. First, I'll start off by chopping up some cabbage. Half a brown onion from earlier. And finally, the chives. And then the ground pork. To this, a teaspoon of low-sodium soy sauce, a teaspoon of fine black pepper, a touch of sesame oil, half a tablespoon of white cooking wine, a little bit of garlic powder, and then the salt to flavor the mixture, and then the corn flour. This will help bind the mixture together. About half a tablespoon. I bought a packet of round mandu skin or wrappers. They are slightly thicker than wonton skins and ideal for frying. So using a spoon, I'll scoop up a small portion of the filling right in the middle of the wrapper. This is a very basic form of mandu, but also you can make the creases on the edges from one end to the other like this. You can shape them in your own style and preference, but this is the most basic form of mandu. So I'll make a few more. But before that, I'm going to sprinkle some flour onto this cutting board so they don't stick. Especially if there's a lot of moisture in the air. If you're frying the mandu in oil, it's better if it's thin and flat like this. Next, we'll need to heat up a skillet. I'm not going to use too much oil, just enough to cover and fry the dumplings. 
The stainless steel skillet heats up really quickly, so you can see. <laughs> Place the dumplings in a single layer in the skillet and pan fry for about a minute. Well, I can see the skin's already browning on the at the bottom, so I'm gonna turn it over. It's cooking up so fast. There you go. I have about a quarter cup of low sodium soy sauce. Two tablespoons of rice vinegar, a teaspoon of sesame oil, and a pinch of garlic powder. You can also use freshly minced garlic as well. And I have some roasted sesame seeds and gochugaru, Korean chili flakes. That's the chili and soy sauce vinaigrette. I believe the mandu is done. It's very crispy on the outside. They smell really good. I'm sure they taste good as well. I have a bed of shredded cabbage and some shredded carrots. This is a garnish. Here are some fresh hand-pulled noodles that I brought back from the restaurant. And so in the meantime, I have been boiling some water in this pot. They'll cook within a matter of minutes. Give it a quick stir. The noodles are done. We will turn it off and strain and rinse the noodles in cold water to get rid of the excess starch. That's enough. I have some cooked peas and carrot, and I'm going to sprinkle over the sauce. There is no other comfort food quite like jajangmyeon to put you in that happy place. I believe it's that time again to see what our favorite liquid chef Woody is up to in his kitchen. Today, I'm challenging him to create a drink using jajang sauce. I'm not sure about this one, but Woody always has a way of surprising me. So, let's find out. So today's mystery Korean ingredient uh, given to me by Kathleen is jajang paste or fried black bean paste. Bit of a challenge to get it into a drink, but I did taste it. It tastes a little bit like olive brine, so I thought, dirty martini, let's see what happens. Hey, we're experimenting, and we can experiment as long as we like in a kitchen. So I thought something sweet, something spicy, a little bit of something like ginger might help the whole thing. Just give that a little bit of a crush up and a muddle and a bottom of a mixing glass. It's now down to the ice. So. Whether you like your martini shaken or stirred is not uh, either here nor there, but I think we do need to shake this one to mix it up. So let's get a, just a little bit of this. It's very strong in flavor, so like half a teaspoon. And then vodka, for me, is just about as much as you like. You can have it like this, you can have it like that, you know, mm -hmm, like that. You can do that in your kitchen as well, it's okay. Um, nothing else really, just get it on and shakey, shakey eggs and bacon. So, strain that off. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a double strain because it's probably like broken up the ice. So take a normal strainer and a smaller strainer like so and just go straight in there like that. Now the garnish, a little bit of orange just to freshen it up. But uh, so you can see this, I'm going to do a flamed orange zest. So get your knife, run it down the side of an orange like so. Just taking the zest off and then with a lighter just heat up the orange zest so it releases the oils a lot easier then just come over here and like that like that and then lastly like that take a skewer if you wanted to uh, sit on top like this like that just like so, and you have a black bean or jajang martini, Korean style. Back to you, Kathleen.
Mm. That's every meal right there. The next recipe is tonkatsu. We'll need to marinate the pork for at least 15 minutes, so let's get started on this part first. For the marinade, I'm going to mix some olive oil, about two ounces, a little cooking wine, a dash of salt, a teaspoon of fine black pepper, a dash of garlic powder. Mix it all together. I have four pieces of thinly sliced pork loin. You don't want to cut all the way through the meat. Just gently score it like this. I'm doing this to allow the marinade to penetrate in between the meat. In another bowl, I'm going to make my orange and sesame balsamic vinaigrette dressing for my spring mixed green salad. First, two heaping tablespoons of balsamic vinaigrette. A teaspoon of fine black pepper. Tablespoon of sesame oil. And I have half an orange here for a little acidity and sweetness into the bowl. It's always better to use natural sweetness from the fruits. That's it. This is my dressing. There are a couple of things I'm going to cut up for the salad. I'm going to chop up some fresh cilantro, one of my favorite herbs of all times. And I'm going to toss in some shredded carrots, dried cranberries, and half a Fuji apple, one of my favorite fruits. pieces of sweet potato that are pre-cut and cooked. I've steamed them so they are pretty soft or you can put them in the microwave. All I'm going to do is put them in the blender with half a cup of milk and a teaspoon of salt. It's way healthier compared to regular mashed potatoes and very tasty. Here's the mise en place for the pork cutlets before they go into the skillet. Half a cup of tempura flour, half a cup of breadcrumbs, egg wash, and we have some olive oil for the frying. We'll add the quarter cup of olive oil. First, coat the marinated pork with the flour on both sides. And then the egg wash. And lastly, the breadcrumbs. Since the pork is only about a quarter inch thick, it won't take too long for it to cook. Probably about two minutes on each side. Now we'll flip them over. I believe the katsu is done. You don't want to get it too dark. And here's some pre-made katsu sauce, a great accompaniment to the pork cutlets. Basically, I made it with apple puree mixed with some rice vinegar, tomato paste, garlic powder, black pepper, and I boiled the mixture in a saucepan for about a minute. A very quick, simple, and tasty sauce for the tonkatsu. What I like to do is just cut it in strips so it's easier to eat. It's still very hot, but as you can see, the pork is cooked to perfection. And as for the spring salad mix, I'll add some dried cranberries and a little bit of almond accents my orange and sesame balsamic vinaigrette dressing. Mm, smells really good. 
the combination of balsamic vinaigrette, the sesame oil, and the orange. Yum. This is one of my favorite salads. And to this, the pork cutlets. The pork katsu is cooked to perfection. It's crispy on the outside, but the meat's very tender and juicy on the inside. And the combination of breadcrumbs and egg really enhances the flavor of the cutlets. And the mashed potatoes are like dessert for me. It's creamy and sweet with a little hint of salty flavor. They go hand in hand with the pork cutlets. Yum! Now, it's time to see what Dr. Dia has to say about the health and nutritional benefits of today's ingredients. Black beans used in Asian cooking are actually black soybeans, which are high in complete proteins and help to nourish weak muscles and joints. In Asian medicine, they're used to nourish the yin, those substances which help keep us young and vital. They also nourish the skin to help improve your outer beauty. As for your personality, you're on your own. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope today's recipes will be on your list of favorite comfort foods as well. So until next time, take care everyone, and don't forget, life's delicious, so taste it. <laughs>